put that there. Good morning, everybody. I think we're going to go ahead and try to start. Uh, that's a new thing here at the commission. We like to try to start on time. And so uh, uh, there's a couple of things I'd, um, uh, we're going to start with. But first and foremost, there are some screenshots on the side on this table. If you don't have one, pick one up. It'll allow you to make some notes and follow along if you can, OK? Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to the commission today for the release of ECFS 2.0. Those of you that have used the system know that it's been around now for 11 years. Hey, Tom, I see a lot of familiar faces here in the crowd, and that's nice also. Um, my name is Bill Klein. I'm the chief of the Reference Information Center, and we've got, we think we have a nice program here for you today. Uh, the, the links and all that I'm going to show you this morning are now live. They went live this morning. And so everything that I'm showing you, you can go back and try immediately uh, when, pardon me, as, as soon as you get back to your office, all right? Um, I also want to mention to you that today uh, is being broadcast live on the internet. And we would like to make sure that if you ask questions, uh, during the session that I'll try to repeat them or we're going to stick a mic and let, play what somebody said, uh, Phil Donahue, and bring the mic to you, okay? So if, if you want to raise a question, if you'd raise your hand instead of blurting out, we'll try to do that so the folks uh, can, can listen online and also so we are also having this closed captioned. Uh, let's see, I'm going to start with a couple speakers and then a couple acknowledgments. And I ask that you turn off your cell phones or put them on silent, please. That way it won't override the mics and all that are here in the room. I'd appreciate it. And first I'd like to introduce uh, Bill Friedman. Bill Friedman is the Associate Chief of the Media Bureau. He's currently serving as the Interim Senior Legal Advisor to Commissioner Meredith Baker. He is in a unique position to speak about FCC practices here in the commission because uh, he has served as an attorney prior to coming to the commission from 78 to 82 and then returned here again in uh, 2003. So he's been on both sides of, of the line. And Bill Friedman. Thanks. Morning. Very nice for a Friday morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all uh, for the introduction of the ECFS 2.0 electronic uh, comment filing system. This development is part of Gen Chairman Janikowski's continuing efforts to make the Commission's processes more transparent and make it a lot easier for people to participate in our proceedings, no matter where they live or do business. At the risk of sounding like somebody who's about to tell you how he walked five miles in the snow to school every day, uh, let me just tell you that in the olden days, before ECFS, making filings at the Commission and doing research here could be quite an ordeal. Let me take you through the mist of time to tell you the way it used to be. 4.30 p.m. was the critical hour that loomed large in the mind of every communications attorney and person that worked in a law firm because that was the time that the secretary's office at the commission closed. And if you had a filing due on a particular day and you didn't get it here by 4.30, you were in a world of hurt. So what you really had to do literally is plan your work day and sometime your work week backwards to make sure that by that 4.30 hour, you knew that you had somebody at the commission with a complete pleading with all the affidavits that were necessary and all the exhibits and all the other signatures. Uh, the sight of extremely stressed paralegals and pedestrians uh, working their way down M Street at about 427 every afternoon was a common thing. Some of these bold adventurers made it back. Some of them weren't quite so lucky. We actually had a paralegal at my law firm. This is a true story who took a pleading to the commission, and on her way to the commission, she was hit by a cab. She made it back to our office with the stamped pleading, and she looked a little rough, so we, you know, we said, are, are you okay? And she literally had tire tracks on her leg where, where the cab ran her over. So it could be a very, very harrowing experience uh, in the days of yore. Uh, conducting research here could also be quite an adventure. 
what you used to have to do was go down to the Commission's public reference room at 19th and M Street and request a red or blue binder for the matter that you were researching. And uh, this is what they look like. Uh, th this is not an exaggeration. Bill pulled this out of archives, and this is a typical binder. This is the red, this is the blue one, this is the red one, and you would request the binder, you'd take it to a table, you'd go through all the documents, you'd figure out which ones you wanted, you physically would take them out of the binder, you would go to a Xerox machine and throw nickels into the Xerox machines, which on a regular basis would jam in a ratio of how stressed you were and how important it was to get the document immediately. It like had a, an incredible sensor uh, in the Xerox machine. And opening the dockets always added a touch of suspense, particularly if you found something in the docket that was misfiled and should have been in another docket. Because what went through your mind was, gee, if they put this in the wrong docket, I wonder if there's an incredible smoking gun that should be in my docket for this station in Indianapolis in the docket that's, you know, talking about a, a cellular system in Topeka. Uh, also, you also had the concern that another researcher who was looking through the file, if there was a nice big thick pleading, decided that it wasn't worth going through the hassle of Xeroxing it, so would just take it and pocket it and, uh, and go to their office with it. And I can tell you that a couple of cringe-inducing moments and the statute of limitations has run on me, so it's okay, but I would have a researcher come back to our office very excited. Oh, look at this great filing I got for you. And I'd look at it, and it was the original with the FCC date stamp, which, uh, w which was nice. And I promise you that uh, I would ask him or her to return it to the commission. And there was also the intoxicating atmosphere of scores of board paralegals crammed into a tiny space of tables, sharing details of their fascinating social lives while they were paging through these dockets. There's a reason why the paralegals at my law firm would refer to the reference room as FCC hell. And woe to anybody at the commission who was doing business who was living somewhere other than Washington. They had to figure out logistically how to get their filings on file at the commission at the 4.30 witching hour the day that their pleading was good. Uh, was due. Some very bold parties would rely on the U.S. mail. Others uh, made arrangements with D.C. firms to make their filings for them. And again, that required preparing the submissions well in advance so they could be delivered here uh, by 4.30 or else. Similarly, people who were outside the commission who had to search FCC files for documents had to arrange with private contractors to do the work for them. And it was always a real challenge talking to whatever researcher was assigned to your case who you'd never dealt with before, explaining the nuances of what you were looking for so that they could go to the commission and pull them out of these dockets. And often, you know, you, you would finally get the envelope uh, uh, express mailed to you uh, that would supposedly have the results of the research and they'd come up with all the pleadings that you had filed yourself that you had stamped copies of. So that would be followed by sheer panic and then another call to the researcher. The introduction of the records image processing system, RIPS, in 1992 represented a giant leap forward giving the FCC records system much more integrity. Although this com uh, computerized imaging system was a clear improvement over these dreaded red and blue binders, it was still necessary for interested parties to come to the reference room, request the documents on the RIP system, have them printed out and take them back to their offices. Uh, you still needed a lot of nickels. And also as before, parties in other cities other than Washington still had to make arrangements with contractors to do the research for them so it still had the same problems that you had when people were dealing with the binders. Uh, ECFS 1.0 was launched on the internet in October 1998 with funding from the 1996 Telecom Act. It allowed online filing, viewing and printing of docketed materials, and, uh, and research in the comfort of your home. No longer was it necessary to physically come to the commission to file something or to research what was in the commission's records, you could make filings and do research and print commission documents anywhere that the internet reached, including their homes. And I can tell you that uh, I often did research in my basement on evenings and weekends, and I thought it was an incredible step forward. 
ECF's ECFS 2.0 builds upon these features of the current system and allows for future growth. Specifically, it makes it easier to electronically make filings and also research those filings that were made by other parties. It's again a giant step forward to advance the chairman's goals of providing increased transparency of our processes and making it even easier for anyone who wants to participate in them to uh, do so regardless of where they live or do business. That's a plus not only for them, but also just as importantly for us at the commission. Because in order for us to make appropriate decisions in the cases before us, it's, it's extremely vital that we have the ability to tap into the knowledge and expertise of all interested parties who will be affected by our decisions. ECFS 2.0 will make it even easier for anyone really throughout the world uh, to see what others have had to say and share their insights with us. A uh, perfect example of that is the net neutrality rulemaking that was just adopted yesterday. You know, we are really, really relying on everyone who's going to be impacted by that, who has an opinion, who has expertise or has data to share to make it available to us. Uh, Bill Klein and his staff should be congratulated for coming up with the substantial improvements that they've made to the ECFS system. And this is just the beginning. Mary Beth Richards, the Commission's Special Counsel for FCC Reform and Managing Director Steve Van Rokel, who's right over here, is going to talk to you in a second, and their staffs are in the process of conducting a top-to-bottom review of the Commission's processes that should result in many more innovations in the way we do business, incorporating cutting-edge technologies. I'd like to turn it over to Bill so that he and Steve can give you the specifics about the new system, and I thank you for coming. You know, I understand that at the warehouse, we still have some of these uh, binders in case you need to have your own personal copy without the dockets. Um, I'd like to also now introduce Steve Van Rokel. Steve is the managing director here at the commission. He arrived this summer with a, from a long career at Microsoft. He's had some early success, successes here at the FCC, prodding people along to use the new uh, technology for connecting citizens using the social networking. Uh, you'll, some of the things that we will show you today, RSS feeds and such, are the things that Steve and his team are promoting. Uh, there are now, I don't know if, you've, if you follow or not, but 8,000 tweets or Twitters, however it's, it's said. 80,000, I'm sorry. And, in, and also the openinternet.gov to encourage public comment and, and participation. So Steve Van Rokel. Morning, everyone. So the uh, the role of the managing director, if you're not aware, is the uh, really the the sort of chief operating officer of the uh, of the commission. I my myself and my team oversee um, pretty much all operational aspects from administrative operations, the building you're in, the security guards you pass by outside, to the uh, to the financial operations, to the use of technology and our IT infrastructure internally and and, uh, and all that, and we have a, a really a, a sort of a new charter um, this year that, uh, that when I came on board with the new chairman, uh, he handed us a challenge and handed the commission a challenge, and that was to make the FCC a model of excellence in government and focus on a, a broad range of things across reforming the agency, the, the people inside the agency getting the most out of our employees to the use of technology both inside and out. And, um, the, the work that Bill and team is doing is, is a great example of this and kind of falls into the, into the three categories that the chairman really laid out from the, from the standpoint of, of technology, and that is uh, communication, data, and participation. Communication really centers around the way we tell the FCC story to the public, the way we connect with our community, our citizens, our industry partners, our constituents in the legal uh, realm, to really tell uh, people about what's happening at the FCC, how the FCC gets its work done, and, and really directly connect with people that care most about the issues that we're facing here. Um, we're doing that in a few ways, one of which is, is uh, in our first 
uh, on-ramp to this was really connecting through social media. Bill mentioned our, our Twitter account. We're, the, we're now the fourth uh, largest Twitter account in government um, and in the top 5% of all Twitter accounts um, uh, worldwide. We're, we're close behind uh, NASA, who's, who's the next one. We're on the tail of NASA, and they're, they're Twittering from space. And so I don't know if I can, <laughs> I can compete with that, but we're, gonna, we're going after them. So uh, we're going in that direction. Um, we're also in the process of, of uh, launching some topical sites uh, that, that apply to specific items in front of the commission. And this is really a way that we can get you know, core messaging out about things that are happening. You may have seen broadband.gov has information about the national broadband plan and openinternet.gov um, that is uh, about the net neutrality proceeding that, uh, that launched yesterday. Um, and so those are places in which we will kind of give citizens information on what's happening at the agency. Um, in addition to those things, we've been, we've been tweaking aspects of FCC.gov itself. We added FCC.gov slash live um, and FCC.gov slash open meetings, which are places in which um, the live site is where this is streaming right now, and, and you can see anything happening in this room inside the FCC um, and look at archival footage of, of proceedings that have happened in this room. And open meetings is a place that when meetings are happening or proceedings are happening, um, we will we'll have a one-stop shop for people to get information about what's going on at the agency. Um, all of these sites and everything that I've mentioned, including all of our social media sites, are available at FCC.gov slash connect. And so if you go there, you can get our, you can connect with us on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, you can do all those sort of things. Uh, look at our YouTube channel and, and see videos there. Um, so communications is the first step. And communications will end um, uh, or, or continue to, to uh, expand through our continuing work on FCC.gov. We're in the process now of a complete top to bottom revamping of FCC.gov. So you'll hear more about that in the coming months and, and uh, into next year. Um, so that's co communicate. Uh, the second one was data. The, the chairman called about 60 day days ago for a, a top to bottom review of data at the agency, including the data that we have in ECFS. A lot of you may not know, we have um, 7 million pages of data in ECFS. and. Uh, one, over 1 1.5 million filings uh, inside this system. An incredible amount of data, but I'm very proud to, to see it going electronic. Um, in, in addition to this data, we have broad sets of data across the agency, and we have an opportunity to, you know, collect data in a better way, use data internally in a better way, including the, the information that's coming through CFS, and then disseminate that to the public in a better way, which this is a great example of how we're gonna, we're gonna do that. The last step of the, of the three step of communication data and the last is participation in how we allow citizens, our industry partners, people in the, in the legal community to participate in the processes that happen. I mean, Bill gave us a great uh, rundown of the historical aspects of what are happening here. Um, in many ways, um, it's still, it, it was still difficult to, to, uh, you know, to manage proceedings with the agency, to give your comments and, and take those comments forward. We want to lower those barriers and make it very easy to not only participate, but find, uh, uh, find the information you're looking for within the agency. And I think um, the ECFS 2.0 system is a shining example of, of how uh, participation can really be done in, in a much better way. Um, when talking to people, both citizen, uh, citizens and, and employees and people in the industry about ECFS, uh, one thing was clear, and the importance of ECFS to the to people getting their job done and being able to participate in the agency, but resoundingly we heard feedback about opportunities for modernization of e ECFS. And I think what you're going to see today is, a, is a, a set of things that are directly tied to the main points of feedback that we got. Um, I'm very excited about the technology improvements in e ECFS that you're going to see today. The first one is really about how ECFS is future-proofed. The way this new platform is architected, it basically gives us at the FCC the flexibility to add improvements over time. So we would love to get your feedback and, and make sure that you have an open line of communication to tell us what improvements you want to see and what's out there. Um, this is going to allow us to add modern technology around the edges that we maybe haven't even dreamed of yet relative to what we're doing. It's also going to let us take things like openinternet.gov and broadband.gov and take comments from those sites and sort of feed them into 
the official proceedings of, of the agency, and we're working on a participatory government uh, framework that will that will kind of have an end-to-end -end solution there, which is great. Um, the other thing is just the modern technology that's included in ECFS. I'm very excited about the ability for people to have RSS feeds. Uh, RSS is really simple syndication. It's a way of subscribing to an individual docket or information that's up on ECFS, and as as things get updated, you can actually get an uh, a, a message back that an update's happened and know that, that that update's happened without even visiting the ECFS site. And so you can actually subscribe to, to different items and you'll see that. Another one and a big, big request is uh, full text search. The ability to go in and search any aspects of, of uh, filings and we've actually indexed uh, the, uh, the information up there um, and, and have it in a way that, that was going to be lightning fast, uh, full text searching. Um, there's a new UI and lots of, uh, lots of improvements in user ability. Um, the, a great thing here is the ability to uh, apply one comment to multiple proceedings and have that kind of be a one-to-many one relationship. Uh, batch printing and, uh, and exporting are two other features that I really like to see. Uh, you can actually take uh, your search and, and uh, your, your, the, the information that you're gathering and export it to an Excel document or, or other, uh, other types of documents and, and be able to process them those way. Um, and there's a lot more, and I'm stealing a bit of, uh, bit of Bill's thunder, so I won't go into all the things, and so he can show you the, the, the sizzling features. But um, to close, I want to thank Bill and his team for, for driving this important work. Um, as I mentioned, it is a, an example of the FCC really leading in government in many ways. Um, on, on becoming that model of excellence. Um, we're in the midst of a transformation and utilizing technology, um, li utilizing listening to the community like yourselves to get feedback on what we should be doing to, to make ourselves a, a great agency um, are really at the forefront of, of how we're going to reach our goals and, and hopefully make your lives even better. So thank you. All right, folks, uh, I've got a couple of acknowledgments to do and then we'll get busy. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize Bill Caton. He works in the Office of Secretary. He's been here longer than, eight, than I and has helped us define the business rules along the way. So uh, thank you, Bill. And then there are the programmers and people that have actually worked on this thing. They work for the Computer Science Corporation. Uh, El Sai is over here. He's been on ECFS from the beginning. Many of you know him. Uh, Eric Hansen, who's driving the presentation this morning. Uh, Eric has worked on the new Java version and such that, and the features that we were going to present today. Kiat Neo, who is actually here before there was an ECFS and helped create the, uh, the beta that many of you tested 11, 12 years ago. And uh, with that, let's, let's get started. I, I do want to note this is live uh, streaming. The questions that you want to ask, if you'd raise your hand, I've got a mic back here. I'll try to feed it to you or I'll try to uh, restate your question. And all of these URLs and all that we're going to show you went live this morning. And so uh, when you get back to your office, you can try those out. One last time for any new people that came in, there's some screenshots here on the table if you need those to take notes. I'm going to stand at the back because I don't want to be standing in the front of this while it's being streamed on the internet. Um, and so we're going to start with the home page here. Uh, there's many things that are different. It explains some of it. It also has some features here that I want to bring your attention to. Uh, first, all those links, including, um, have definitions of, of what we mean by submitting, searching for a filing and proceeding and submitting a filing. Put that in my pocket, OK? Uh, at the bottom of this page, you will find the contact information for us. The ECFS helpline uh, has not changed. It's still the same. And if you have comments, uh, <laughs> suggestions, low-hanging fruit of things that we can do to improve it, use that email account right there, ecfshelp at fcc.gov. And um, we'll take this, and hopefully it won't be as long to get version 3.0 up for you for some changes. Uh, also on this page, you'll see that there are the manual. And uh, we're, we intend to do sometime next week 
a training tutorial using a product called Camtasia. Uh, Steve's team that he's brought with him are going to help me go through and sort of do a tutorial of what I'm going to show you now and it will be posted here that you can download and use for training later on. Um, the first thing I want to bring your attention to here is this calendar. This calendar lists by day, by month, and you can go back. Um, the filings that were posted to ECFS for those days. Just click on last Friday or tomorrow, yesterday, 22nd would be fine. It brings up this page that shows you everything that was posted to the record as of yesterday. And this, as many of you know, you can submit on ECFS to a filing up till midnight. It's not the 430 window that Bill spoke of. But I caution you not to wait till midnight. I, I, I suggest to you to try to get it in there earlier. But um, all of these features that I'm about to show you right here are available whenever you search for the filings. But each of these titles of these columns are all, you can click on them to resort the data. So if you hit proceeding name, it resorts it. And you can do that for the dates, you can do that for the uh, uh, the title, the filer, or what have you. And, by, and if you go down to the bottom, I'll show this to you now, way to the bottom, way to the bottom. You see that customized columns there? If you click on that link, you can either add, delete, or change what is presented in your view. So it's completely up to you now what you want to see and what's presented on this form. Um, tabular if you see the view there, uh, if, this is a tabular view so you can sort it. If you want to see the old view that you're familiar with with ECFS, that's called an expanded view. And you can go back to the view that you're used to getting in the old 1.0 version. If you'll resort that back to tabular for the, for the rest of this, that'd be great. Rather than dealing with the features at the top, I'd rather deal with that when we go to do searching. It'll just make it somewhat easier. Um, at this point, because most of you uh, submit comments, we're going to go right to submitting a filing. This is the new screen. Uh, you'll notice where there's a question mark. If you want to find out what that is, hover over it, and it'll tell you what those fields are for. We did that also for people uh, who use screen readers so that if... Um, if you are using a screen reader, it will actually read to you what that field means so that we can be 508 compliant for the disability community. But let's throw in here a couple of uh, proceedings. Some of the things I want to show you here, see that hotkey? As you type in a docket, it starts narrowing the list of dockets that are available for you so you can click on it immediately or just type it in. Now, you can also, finally, add another proceeding. As you know, uh, there's multiple proceedings now that you file comments into. You can add as many as you, as many as we require you to add. Let's put it that way. But in this case, we're adding two. These two dockets here, this 00-2000 and the 00201, are dummy dockets. If you want to go back and test without submitting an official filing and waiting until 11 o'clock at night for somebody to tell you to file, use these two dockets and you can do some testing and send it in and try it out. The numbers are 00-2000 and 00-2001. Those are dummy dockets. You can put the information in that you like and then try it out before you go wait until the 11th hour. All right? Um, a couple other features here. You'll see many of these are still required fields. You have to enter them in or it will not accept it. Drop one out, drop the zip code out just for a second so I can show you what happens if you say continue. If you don't fill out the fields, it will come back to you and say, hey, wait a minute, this is a required field. You have to enter it in. Now, the other feature I want to show you here is that you can submit multiple documents to this as well. Uh, we have found over the years that folks want to do like a cover sheet they want to do the actual exhibit. They want to do something else all at one time. And that caused, used to be you had to back up, submit, back up, submit, back up, submit. Now you can just add to your heart's content. 
Um, and this, this custom description here, if you say cover page, you might want to be, or exhibit A or exhibit B, exhibit A to what? <coughs> exhibit A to, I don't know, broadband plan? Uh, try to, you can be as, as detailed or descriptive as you can, and it'll help be able to f identify it on the search results later on. Continue. This is another feature we've, we've tried. Bef um, come on down. There's, two there's a couple things here I want to show you. First of all, you'll see the links down here with your filing. You have now the opportunity to look at it and make sure it's not the red line version that you weren't supposed to submit to us. Okay? I encourage you to use this feature before you actually hit submit again. And that way, it'll minimize the number of calls that we get the next morning saying, please, please delete that filing. Um, it, it takes note here that I want to mention a couple things to you before we proceed. One, if you have a password protected file and you submit it, we're not accepting it. You're going to get a rejection. When you check on the status, it's going to say that it's, it's been rejected, that it failed. We cannot process a password file in ECFS. Um, so I caution you to do that. I caution you also to, to use this uh, before you go to the confirmation just so that you can build this into your process to look at the document to make sure it's what you wanted to submit. In the event, in the event that you finally realize that you sent the, it was a correct document, wrong cover page or something of that nature, and you find, and you find it out after we get to the confirmation, resubmit the correct information, send an email to ecfshelp.gov, and tell us the incorrect filing, and we'll, we, we're able to make it confidential so it won't be viewed. But let's move forward here, and let's just confirm this now so I can show you something else. Once you do, uh, hit continue, and then confirm. This is the sheet you're now going to get. It's going to tell you the proceedings that you filed into, the actual name that's on the record. It's going to give you your address, your contact info, and it's going to tell you what documents you filed. The other thing it's going to give you is the ability to click this little link and check on the status. Often we get a phone call saying, my filing's not there. What's the status? Where is it? Now you can find out for yourselves. I'll show you another place in a few moments that you can check on that as well. But that one, go back there for a second before you add this document. It says, not yet available online. We have some examples here we're gonna, that we did yesterday to show you the other statuses that you'll see. Now you can go ahead, Eric. This is on, it's been accepted. And you can click the link. The way you know that it's been accepted is it'll bring up this pane window here with your filing. Once it's been approved, you don't have a status. It's already available on the database. This is a quick view to make sure that the document is there. You can click on the link to bring it up in PDF and then print it out if you want it. Let's go to the next one. And this is for which one? This is for multiple? Yeah, this is, this is when you filed into multiple proceedings. And now when you click on it, it doesn't bring up the document because there's two filings, and they're in two different dockets. In our, this case, 2000, 2001. But you can click on, and it shows you that it is there because it brings up the document that you submitted. And this is one where you put in a password file, locked file, tells you that the problem converting the document. And it'll tell you that that'll be your indicator that something is wrong with your filing. You should call us immediately. All right, let's go back to. Let's see, we did submitting a file. Let's go to check on the status of filing that's different. This, if you click on checking on the status of filing, you can use one of those confirmation numbers that we had. You can take your confirmation number. And if, you've, if it says that it's not available online, you can take the confirmation number, put it into this block, 
and look it up and it again it'll give you that same feature as you got on your confirmation sheet if it has not been posted it will tell you that it's been accepted but once it is been disseminated onto ECFS then it brings up the filing itself um, while we're here click on receiving name for a second this shows you the things that were filed in this document in the last three days um, I'm going to show you this in a few moments when we do a proceeding search where uh, this feature will show you a little bit more information so let's do a proceeding search we've submitted a filing now we're going to do a, a, a proceeding search again you can either type it in but in this case if you know the docket and you do a proceeding search here's what you're going to get you're going to get all of the FCC's releases in the docket in the last 30 days and all of the comments received in the docket in the last 30 days we broke it out in two formats for you you no longer have to put in in this case in this type of search FCC into the law firm you automatically get this when you do a uh, proceeding search and you click on on it to see what the filings are let's go back to proceeding search for a second if you don't know what the filing is and you're trying to find out I mean if you don't know what the proceeding is click on the uh, Bureau uh, you can do it if you think you know that it was out of the old common carrier you can do it that way or you can do it in this case because I'm with the Consumer Governmental Affairs Bureau you can click on it and tell it to search and it's going to list all of the the dockets and rulemakings that are assigned to the Consumer Information Bureau now there's a couple things here that you can do you can actually click on the docket itself the first one is fine again after you've found the docket that you want then it, it, it breaks it into this format uh, back up again uh, click on the bureau that right there and it'll tell you the number of filings in the, is this the last 30 days all the, the number of filings to each of those proceedings in the last 30 days within that bureau and that allows you then to see the names of the uh, proceedings as well as how many comments were received in the last 30 days all right uh, let's search for a filing everybody okay so far I get in a lot of nods that's good oh oh just in case you are insistent of using the old version and you really want to use the old version we're going to leave it live for uh, a couple weeks or so until you uh, until we see that there's no use and then we'll drop it off you see those yes <laughs> we're calling that 1.0 um, let's search for a filing let's see here if you know the proceeding that's obvious but uh, let's just use the broadband one uh, 9 51 um, and here they are now there's a couple interesting things again all of these columns are you can are sortable you can change the method you can go to the bottom and add or delete what you see in this view as well but I want to bring your attention to this hit on the I under the very first filing you don't you no longer have to go in and pull up or click the link to go to the document you can actually just get a quick view of it right here in this window pane and if you really want to print it out or something then you can press on the link it opens up a separate window so that you don't have to uh, uh, go press the back button and if you want it then you can print it if you don't close it let's go back there's something else I want to show you here if you click on the docket itself the 09-51 <coughs> again it will give you the, the, the t two tables between those received and those that were issued by the Commission uh, let's go back to the beginning uh, of that search for a filing there you go modify search 
Now let's just drop out 09-51. My favorite is name a filer. If, let's just say you want AT and T. Just put AT ampersand T. Um, now wait a minute. Go back though. I want to show them something. You see that date received there? We default to two weeks ago. You can change that if you want. You can do it as far back as, you, as the data here is all the way back to 1992. I caution you not to do that on this type of search. Um, but I'm bringing it to your attention because people will often ask, well, how do you find out if AT&T filed? AT&T is the party. They are the filer. It's not on behalf of or any of the other uh, fields that we have. Hit enter. Let's search. Now that you've got all these, what do you do with them? There's 504. You can see that it'll always tell you how many came back in your results, results set. Go back to modify. Now you can narrow this by changing the date and just make it, well, did they file yesterday? And so there are some, I, I, I think this is a, a good way for people to get to information. You could also say, well, hey, look, modify search again. I just want to find out what kind of replies they made or if they did an ex parte. Let's do ex parte. You now have a little check there. You don't have to go and change the document type. There's a little check there for ex parte. Click on it, and that's what you get. Is everybody comfortable with this? Well, golly, this is going along a lot faster, faster than I thought it would. Um, I'm sorry, I have a question. Yes. With that RSS feed, We're gonna, how, wait a second. how does that update? In the sense that if I just do a general search for AT&T and then I can Let's do it. RSS feed. Go to RSS on this one here. We've narrowed this down, you'll recall, under AT&T, as of yesterday, what was filed. That's what this, R, if you set it for that RSS, this is exactly what you will get. Go ahead. Is there, under certain circumstances, I may want something that's updated. As an example, if I just want to, for whatever ridiculous reason, track AT&T's ex partes, do I just do AT&T, search for ex parte, do the search, and then hit RSS? That's it. That's exactly it. That's, e exactly it. that's exactly it. That's exactly what you would do. Uh, let's go back and mod Yes, sir. How do you account for ambiguity, especially in a name like AT&T? I'm sorry? How do you account for ambiguity, especially with a name like AT&T, because they also file as A-T space A-N-D space T, or A-T no space ampersand no space T, A-T space ampersand and T? How do you account for that? Well, there's no question that AT&T has 30 different file methods of, of how they submit. Uh, they're not the only one. They're not the only one. It's just a good example. It's a, it's a great example because of, of its A space or A dot T dot ampersand dot T. Um, it's trial and error, folks. I, I mean, I don't have the answer that we, there's no way that we can insist that they put the data in a particular format. It's like Verizon. Is it Verizon? Is it Verizon Company? Is it Verizon LLC? Is it Verizon, what have you? It's, it's going to have to be a trial and error. There is no single way to answer all of that with a search. We're going to do full text search in a second. It might be another way to get back to it, but we'll try. Uh, hold up. Great. I'm glad you're doing this because the people on the internet want to know what you're asking. Let's see, who was it first? I was just curious if the, if the search only looks for exact matches, or can you have it perform, uh, use something like a like operator where it would search for the word, uh, a certain word within the actual um, value? Well, in this case, in this type of search, this is the ECFS metadata. Mm -hmm. And so it's only the way that it's entered, unfortunately. Right, but there are different ways you can conduct a search. You can conduct a search where it will only bring up results when, when the criteria input is an exact match to what's stored in the database or if the criteria input is contained within the value stored in the database. Like if you put up, if you enter Verizon, you're also going to get Verizon Wireless. Yes. Yeah. If you enter Verizon, you get, you do get Verizon Wireless. Verizon. This is a literal match, correct? It's what you said, it's a like criteria. Yeah. Okay, it's a like criteria, I'm sorry. Then, that you, then you, you've got it. Let's see, 
There was another question here. I've noticed in the last couple of days that when you put the amper stand in there, when filing an ECFS, it changes it to and. That was part of ECFS 1.0. Oh, oh, oh. Let me, the, the, your question about changing it to and, the old 1.0 version of ECFS? It only started doing it this week. Well, we, ha we, we had th that old code. Yes, it's not working. You turned it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the old code, uh, we had people attack it several times recently. We've had to put parameters around it. We're, now that we're going to the 2.0, we're going to be able to release those parameters. Yes. Sorry, sorry to keep badgering you. When, when I do a search for a filing is in a specific docket, is it possible to search more than one filer? Let's say I want to know all of my filings and one of my sister organization filings. Do I have to do two separate RSSs, or can I just put my company, comma, two the other? No. Two separate. Two separate. Thank you. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's go back to the search so we can show them the RSS and the other features, okay? All right, in this case, let's do um, broadband again, 09-51. My favorite is to come down, oh, we'll put today's uh, last two weeks ago date, and then come down and exclude brief text comments. Uh, brief text, the question is, what is brief text comments? If that's where people have filed in uh, similar filings, but they're all saying the same thing. We've given, but they're out of a text file. We we actually can call that out now. If you press, it's been around now for several years, but you can press that little box and it'll exclude them. We did that. I did that for the purpose of this. Um, let's see here. Where are the number of filings? Ninety-five. It tells you that are on this this result set. Now, there's several things that, the, that I want to show you that you can do. You can export this to an Excel file format. And it gives you all of that metadata that's, that you define. Now, remember those columns that I showed you that you could customize? If you customize them, that's the data that's going to be exported to Excel. But it also gives you the link to the document. All right? And so, uh, we did this because we know that some of you have asked us to do it for you, and it's been difficult to do, so now you can do it for yourselves. Um, let's get out of here. And generate a history report. Um, this, many of you, if you've been to court with, uh, or something, and you've had to go through and check what is in the document, this gives you the ability now to do that. And it gives you the, not only the name of the filing, but the metadata that's associated with it. Let's get out of here. Let's go to RSS. Now, you'll remember now, my search criteria for this was 09-51, um, excluding brief text comments, and now go RSS. That's exactly what you're going to get. The question is, uh, will RSS continue to update as time goes on? Yes. Um, we're providing the feature. I understand that RSS uh, readers are available for free that will actually notify you with a little window each time that a new document is updated to the RSS feed. And then how would you turn that off? How do you turn it off? You go, that's a good question. How do you turn it off? Because you only provide the service on the client side. No, no. If you want to unsubscribe. Uh, you can you can delete the bookmark. Okay. Delete the bookmark. Uh, this feature, just as the one I'm going to show you here in a minute on full text, they're all new to us, and so we're learning as we're learning with you. Yes. Is there a way, if you prefer to get them by emails, for instance, if you have a handheld and you want to check on the docket, can you get it 
as emails as opposed to an RSS, which tends to work better if you have a full browser. I, I don't I don't know. You'll have to check with the very. I understand there are some readers that'll give you that alert. But it's not it's not generated from the FCC. You don't have an option to be email docket update. No, no, you do not have an option for an email update. We're just feeding, giving you the RSS feed, and then you decide how you want to get that and use it. All right, uh, let's go back. Yes. On this screen, when you customize it to what you want, the criteria you want, do you have to do that each time? Well, once you set the criteria that you want, that feed's going to come to you all the time. If you want it for a different docket, let's just go back and do a search. Let's go back and do another one. Let's just say that I want uh, all comments, change, it, change the file type to comment, and exclude brief text comments, and now just do a search. Oh, yeah, because that's in the last two weeks. Go ahead and do a search. Go ahead and do the RSS feed. You can be this broad. You can be this broad. You can say that I just want the comments. I might just want the ex parte. I might just want replies because you know they're coming up or something. You can be as broad or as specific as you want to be. And they will always come up to you. You will always get the update. All right? Uh, everybody okay so far? Then let's go. I'm sorry. I can't see you over there. Hold up a second. When you search by the filer name, if, uh, for example, at and is part of a group of multiple filers, will it pull up that record as well? No, because you only, you only specified at and mm -hmm. But if you put in the other ones, uh, you'll have to set a search criteria for each one of those. All right, let's go to full text search. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we started this a couple months ago. Uh, I've gotten many questions of, well, how do you use it? And I could ask you that because it's, this is sort of a work in progress. I tell you that only because we have now indexed the entire database. As Steve told you earlier, there's over 7 million comments in this database. Um, over 1.5 million filings that have been indexed. And so it, it, it will get you what you asked for, but then you've got to try to narrow it down is what we've found. And I'm going to try to show you some of that now. We're going to do white spaces. Uh, it brings up 2,510 hits off of white spaces. Now what we've noticed is, go back to the actual advance so we can modify this. If you put in white spaces, all one word, you get a certain hit. If you put it in quotes, you get a different hit. Um, if you separate it, white space, then you get a different type of hit. What, what I suggest to you is to try it. You can try it both ways, with quotes or other ways. Some of it narrows. It's truly the Boolean search type criteria that you've used with other systems. Um, what we've done is try to narrow it for a time frame, for instance, the dates posted on onto ECFS. Try to, once you get that 2,510, if it's not, if it's too broad, then try to narrow it. And then when you do that, it cuts it down to 36. Um, you can put it into the docket. Once you've done this search, one of the things I want to show you is look at that docket, 04186. That's the original white space Proceeding. So now you can go back and say, hey, look, just give me the white space filings that are in 04-186. That will further narrow the search. Yes. Hold up. I'll let you have this. Here, let's see if that's on. It is now is sometimes um, limited by whether someone's filed a PDF scan or a PDF electronic and does the 
ECFS able to override that limitation or still if I've got I've got it um, some of the firms when they file an, uh, an Accurate PDF have done it as a scanner they've gone to their copiers or what have you scanned it and sent it in some people file it and we prefer that you file it in Word and we'll convert it for you when we convert the document it is in an image plus text for file format. If they scan it in as, as, a, as a picture, it's, pardon me? Then we do OCR it. Then it will have your, uh, we convert everything, including the scanned version, to image plus text. And what we've done further, just, just, just to also let you know, is while we were waiting to launch this, while some of us were pulled into something called DTV, uh, the programmers went through and converted every single filing to image plus text all the way back to 1992. And so all of that data is in this search criteria, okay? Hence, you can get some really large filings off of, uh, uh, search results off this data. Hold up a second. Who was it? Um, I had a question. Is there a wild card for searches? For full text searches, they're a wild card for searches. Anything that you've used on Bullion before. Okay, like percent or whatever. Thank you. Yeah, if you go to the Google search appliance area and, and, and see how they use it, we're using the Google search appliance. We've just took off all the commercials. When you say all the standard boole uh, Boolean um, commands, so that if you wanted to find, let's say, white space within five word, within f ten words of television, you could do w slash five in that Boolean search, and you would get only those. It would limit it to those to when those five words are when, when they're within that number of words, as opposed to. Anywhere in the document, it says television at the top, and it says white space on page 92. You know, I don't, I don't think we have that answer, unfortunately. Um, you know, this is, we're providing this, this uh, as a means for trying to do the search, but we've not experimented with that. I would recommend that you try it, or go to Google, pull up their document, and see if that is one of the features that are available through the Google search appliance. I, I don't know, we don't know the answer to that. We haven't tried that particular search. But if that is a capability that's provided by the, the GSA, then, then yes. Um, where, 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 where? Hi. I actually have kind of a list of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that uh, just yesterday I noticed that when you run a search on a docket in the new ECFS, you get a different document count than the old ECFS was giving without any clear indication where these additional documents came from. Well, how'd you use the, how'd you use the new version? It was up yesterday. Okay. Um, uh, and, and it's, it's, um, there's one docket that we checked just for a sanity check where nothing new has been filed since 2005, yet the new ECFS was showing more documents than the old ECFS. I would be willing, I don't know the, the direct answer, I really don't. Uh, I can tell you we've put a lot of protection around 1.0 just because we were having serious uh, intrusion into that, that application. And that might be the answer because you'll notice that a, a month or so ago, uh, we reduced the feature of all so that you couldn't get everything. That's exactly why we did it. Uh, we had somebody, you'll notice that around that time go, that the system came down for a day or so. That's why. I see. And so we, that old code is, is very difficult to maintain, has not been supported for at least five years. And we've just sort of been moving along with it. Another question. When you were talking about how your wonderful staffers went back 
to the dawn of time and converted all the documents to a searchable format. Is that why a couple of months ago I was running into an astonishing number of documents that were not opening and saying that they'd been damaged or that's right. page that's not right. found? That's right. Because what we were doing was pulling off the old document, converting it. We kept those just for that purpose. If there was a corrupted file, if there was something there, then we put it off on storage and we kept it so that we could go back to the original native format, rechange it and fix it. If you see corrupted files, let us know. We've kept all those just great. in case. Okay, great. And back when you did your first preceding search and you were showing us how to open a document in a new window, do we, do we have to turn our pop-up blockers off to use that? I don't know. I don't. No. Okay. All right. I think that's my whole list. Hey. <laughs> so far. You're welcome. <laughs> the um, the full text search does that pull from both file comments and documents that the commission itself mm. provides? Yeah, we we converted everything to to image plus text. So if I wanted to do a, a full text search and I just wanted to narrow it down to what the commission has issued as far as NOIs, NPRMs, et cetera, I can... Yeah, you can put FCC in the law firm and it'll only focus on, on the FCC. You want to try that? Yeah. There you go. Any other questions? Um, some of my questions might actually be subject of something you're going to address in a couple of minutes, I'm so feel done. free to postpone. Okay. Um, I wanted to go back to the idea of the um, document that's been accepted but isn't yet posted. There have been a couple of circumstances where, like, a public notice has been released about a petition for rulemaking, and their docket is on there, and you go to the docket, and there's nothing there. And I'm always sort of curious about what is the lag time. I I'm not, um, you know, I understand that it might be when there's massive filings going on in the broadband proceeding, the FCC isn't going to automatically post stuff right away. But on the other hand, um, first of all, when there's a, a petition for a rulemaking that initiates a new document, a new docket, sorry, and there's a public notice that's released, people automatically want to see the petition, but the petition isn't there. Um, I've got that one, okay. actually. And I actually you have another one? Yeah. We're only limited in you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second one is... Wait a minute, let me write that one down, because I know the answer to that okay. one. Um, in, uh, if you're filing, is this system going to change anything when you're filing something such as a petition for rulemaking that won't have an assigned docket number? Then you still need to set, submit a paper, da 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 da. As, and the same question goes for filing proprietary materials. You would simply electronically file the, electro <laughs> the redacted, but you'd still need to um, deliver. So there's no way to fi electronically file proprietary materials. No, but those are all great questions because uh, I, know, I know why you've seen the PM with a rulemaking number. It might have the public notice that we issued, but not the underlying petition. Yeah. E e e 11 5 7 7 just this past week it happened there is a delay it's scanned it, we actually have to scan that now the we're all looking at changes in process here in the Commission all of us it's part of of what we've been tasked to do is why are we doing things the way we're doing them and is there a better way to do it and this is one of those um, I have the ability to give staff in the Commission a login and a password and let them put those petitions in after I've created the docket or the rulemaking. Right now, they have to bring me that information. It has to be prepped with the index fields. It has to then be scanned and it then has to be QA'd and then finally posted to the record. That's the delay. Um, proposed rulemakings not assigned how do you deal with that? Now, all of you know, let's just do, go back and do a, a, a search. 
put in PRM uh, 09 and grab uh, uh, that one's fine. All of you know that if you send in, you have to send in a hard copy to a proposed rulemaking not assigned to a docket. You just have to because there's no place for you to file it. Now there are times where people file a petition for rulemaking in a docket because it's related to that issue, we then have to go through the process of getting it out and putting it in to holding areas like this. Now this is, in years gone by there were a lot more of these. There's not as many as there are today. But click on it, open it up, open the purple application. This is ours. You'll see it has a stamp on it. That means that my staff had to index it, scan it, and get it into this holding area. This is where many of those go. Until the bureau or the office decides that yes, we're gonna sign a rulemaking, or yes, we're gonna sign a docket, or guess what, we're not gonna do anything with it at all. I mean, there are multiple options that they have. Uh, or they can dismiss it on its, on its face without doing anything. Um, so the, there is no place for you to do that. There is, I am interested, in allowing you, except for table of allotments, to have an, the ability to file into these holding areas. That's rule changes. And right. so that's not gonna happen quick, okay, because that's proposed rule changes. Right. They have been offered up for people to consider. Okay, okay. The, the last one of, also, uh, what was it? the other one you asked was? Confidential. Confidential. Um, Confidential filings, just by their nature, are in a locked holding area that only two people have a key to. And so if you're, you have a filing that you need to make, you need to get the confidential to the office of the secretary, have it clearly marked that it contains confidential information on the first page, not on the exhibit that's five pages back. It could, should clearly mark that it's, it contains confidential information. We've been caught with not having that done correctly. Do accept them on CD? They will accept them on CD as well. Those go into a holding area, but you need to file the redacted so it can go to the record. Is that something that will be actually hosted to say it's confidential, or is it just you don't even know? No, I think, I think we, we note in the record that there's a confidential filing when some people files. Well, there's, there's two things. You'll see, the question is, can you see confidential files that are on there? Now, you'll see that when on the record sometimes it says confidential, and you can't bring up a copy of the image. The reason is somebody messed up. I don't delete anything from record. You need to know that. If you make a filing and it was the incorrect document being filed, you then follow up and submit the correct document and you want me to delete the incorrect file document. I will not delete it. I will make it confidential so it cannot be viewed. But it still shows up in the record as a search when you get the results that X filed, it says confidential, but it's, it, it is most likely because it was a second filing and it was so the incorrect. Right, you won't see it. If it's done right, I won't, you Bill, won't see it. Bill, there's a caveat to that. Uh, Hold up, Bill. Evidently. Now see, that's why we have Bill here is because he's been here longer than me. There, there's a caveat to that. Now, if we've placed it on the internet, we won't delete it. We'll treat it as confidential. If, if we haven't placed it on the internet yet, just a simple email requesting that we delete the filing, we'll delete it. That's why I told you earlier that if you're making a filing, it's late at night, you filed the wrong thing, file the correct thing, send an email to us, and we, will, we can stop the other one from being disseminated. There's a question in the back. Hold on a second. less related to 2.0 than a general question. If we're filing it with uh, a public version and a confidential version, we can do everything but the confidential version through ECFS. Is that what you prefer? That's correct. That's correct. Do it that way. And only do the confidential in, in paper. Secretary. That's right. We prefer, it that way. we prefer it that way. Okay, great.
That's all right. I'm coming that way. <laughs> I love it. All right. Is there any other questions, folks? We, we, I, I do have another question. All right. Well, um, you'll be on the record for this one? This one's okay. Um, is it possible for, you were showing us how we can enter our confirmation number and see that our status is accepted but not posted. Right. Is there a way that I can see that another party has filed even if they're filing? If they have their confirmation number. If you have their confirmation but number, you can do that. But not if I have their, if I search by, for them by name, I'm not going to see them until That's right. it's actually That's posted. Right. Okay. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. One more in the back. Hold up. I do feel like Phil Donahue in here, okay? I, I really do. It's like... This is a quick question that just occurred to me. Is ECFS 2.0 browser reliant or is it browser uh, compliant? Does it do all of them? Yeah, it does all of them. Great. All right, folks. If, hold up. See, we never see some of you folks in here anymore. You know, you don't, you don't write, you don't call. Just, I don't know, um, and I know it depends on how many filings are done. <laughs> um, how long does it normally take for something to get posted to ECFS when you submit a filing? Is it, you know, I've called before and it's been within 10 minutes, it's up. So how quickly will you get your confirmation? Like if you check, you know, in 20 minutes, could it be there? Or is it sometimes the next day? Or well, you should get your confirmation. No, I'm sorry. You should you get your confirmation right, quickly. Right, but when you go to track, if it's been posted well, online. I think part of that also depends, I'll let Bill answer, but part of it depends on the volume of comments that are coming into the place. Okay, just by the nature of it. Yeah, there's a lot of answers to that question. If you're filing ex parte presentations and you file them before uh, 4.30, they'll probably be placed out there before the end of the day. If they're filed, any documents filed after 5.30 will not show up until approximately 10 o'clock the next day. And so, and you're always, you're always welcome to give me a direct call if, if if you want to know if there's anything in the system that hasn't been placed on the system yet, too. But partially, part of, of, of that delay is to make sure there's not any, not any sunshine provisions or, or anything of that nature. Uh, touching on the last question, what is the latest? You said if something's submitted before 530, it'll go on that day. What's the latest that we should reasonably check if we need to you know, check to see if anything has shown up in the docket on that day. 5.30. So nothing gets posted to the docket after 5.30? People go home. <laughs> well, that's, well, uh, well, I mean, there is another answer to this. If my staff are scanning it and it's, uh, it's come in in the mail and my staff are scanning and indexing for the posting, we don't go through the Office of the Secretary's review process. So things will show up in that document that had come into my shop, into the Reference Information Center, that had been scanned during the day and just are finally getting posted in the evening. You will see those, but what he's speaking of are those that are done electronically um, and, and need to be disseminated by the Office of the Secretary. Any other questions? I just wanted to go back to the non-docketed filings or uh, correspondence that is filed, maybe not technically an ECFS issue, but sometimes maybe a senator might write a letter to the chairman or to the commission. How, you know, you read about it, but you can't find mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. how, how would you uh, deal with that? Well, uh, you know, I've been doing this job since 95, and things called non-docketed filings are are uh, are a challenge, and um, but there is, I can't answer your question for congressional signed by the chairman. Let's go do O L O nine C C. Hit search. They're now putting them up for those that are policy related, for Congress that the chairman is signing. A few weeks ago, we worked to uh, with the Office of Legislative Affairs. This holding area, OL, dot, uh, two X's for a year, and CC for congressional correspondence, will now have uh, those, those that the chairman has signed that are policy related. OL, here, here, CC. 
That's right. No, no, it's got the end going. It's got the incoming. There's. Oh, okay. Yeah, click on that link. It has the incoming and the outgoing. So I was. That one's done, but I don't. The other, the other non-docket. Um, they're usually not placed on the internet until the chairman That's correct. It's seven days. He give, gives them time to go in the mail to get to the congressman or senator before they're put up here, so that we're not preempting them in receiving their mail. Yes, go ahead. What about enforcement bureau proceedings? What well, about them? Well, um, are they ever going to enter into the ECFS world or somebody wants to see the... Are you talking about their, 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 their formal complaints? or you, that's, not, that's not a proceeding per se. That's an NAL. That's, those, are, those are enforcement actions. And that's just like, I don't, I don't put on here the broadcast actions. And so there are a host of things that fall out of this. Now, I can tell you that I, we have added additional non-DACA proceedings more and more. We've done that on a variety of things. But those are really don't have, a, if you will, the, uh, the comment cycle that come with proceedings. And so therefore, they're not as part of this record. You might want to ask that question of somebody that's a higher pay grade than me. But. <laughs> If they have file numbers associated with it, they won't be on the document. Yeah, that's part. That's the th main thing. I mean, if they have a docket number, then you'll see. Yeah, if it has. No, but like there's an EB order that might come out, and somebody will say, "Oh, can I see the you know the document number?" Yeah. Yeah. Or something. Hmm. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's not related to ECFS. Anything else? One more question. Sorry, you had, you'd mentioned earlier that um, when you look up a proceeding, you get all the FCC, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's a split page, all the comments. Right. And what, so does that include, would that include press releases uh, mm -hmm. around that and statements, uh, commissioner statements are related to that or, or how? No, it does include, it would include FCC releases, okay? okay? public notices, news releases, things of that nature that are related to a docket. Okay. okay? Yeah. Folks, is that it? I thank you for coming. You. We hope that you like it. You. Let us hear from you. Good you did good, man. Whew. That went, that went very well. That went pretty well. I made back my horizon. That was Hi. really... Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I feel like the next thing you mentioned that uh, the tutorial.